Hello! I hope you are doing fine. Just recently, the Mathematical Society of the Philippines has announced the Philippine delegates to this year's International Mathematical Olympiad or IMO. I wish them the best in their IMO participation. In this video, we will discuss one of the questions in the 2019 PMO finals. PMO stands for Philippine Mathematical Olympiad, which is one of the stepping stones towards getting a, ch a chance to compete in the IMO. The problem asks for the sum of the product of the Euler quotient of a positive integer n and the quotient of 4 to the n and 7 to the n minus 4 to the n for all positive integers n. For contest mechanics, this question is doable in 90 seconds. Of course, that's considering how excellent the contestants were. I suggest that you pause this video first and give this problem a try. Before proceeding, I'd like to thank one of our subscribers, Ben, for asking us today's wonderful question. Just to give a brief background on the Euler quotient function, the quotient of a positive integer n counts the number of integers from 1 to n that are relatively prime to n, with 1 being considered as relatively prime to every positive integer, including itself. For example, for n equals 24, there are clearly 24 positive integers from 1 to 24 as listed. Since 24 has 2 and 3 as prime factors, then we should remove from this list all numbers that are divisible by 2 or 3 because they definitely are not relatively prime to 24. We cancel out all multiples of 2, then all multiples of 3. This leaves us with 8 numbers which are not divisible by 2 or 3, implying that they are not uh, relatively prime or they are relatively prime to 24. Hence, the quotient of 24 is 8. Of course, there is a shorter, shorter way of evaluating this function. The quotient of 24 is equal to 24 times 1 minus 1 half times 1 minus 1 third, which is just the product of 24 and 1 less than the reciprocal of the prime factors. Going back to what is asked for, the sum and consists of two items. The first is the quotient, and the other one is the ratio of exponentials. The quotient part already looks simple to me, and writing it in terms of the prime factors would seemingly complicate things. Hence, it is quite prudent to start dealing with the ratio of exponentials first. The solution we're about to discuss involves two important maneuvers, the first of which is related to the ratio of exponentials. So we'll do, we'll do it first. By simple algebra, we can multiply the numerator and denominator by 1 over 7 to the n to make one of the terms in the denominator equal to 1. Taking a closer look at this denominator gives us the impression that it looks similar to the fraction a over 1 minus r, which you might probably know as the sum of the infinite geometric series with first term a and common ratio r. For the rest of the discussion, we will let alpha is equal to 4 over 7, which makes the entire expression equal to alpha to the n over 1 minus alpha to the n. To further simplify this, the earlier formula, we note the first, uh, that the first term, being the numerator, is equal to the common ratio r, which makes the expression in the form r over 1 minus r, with r being alpha to the n. This means that the expression is equal to the infinite sum of alpha to the n plus alpha to the 2n plus alpha to the 3n, and so on. This is uh, valid because alpha to the n is always less than 1 for, for all positive integers n, making the series, the geometric series, convergent. In sigma notation, that's the sum of alpha to the nk, where, a, where k runs from 1 to infinity. And so, the expression could be rewritten as a double summation. If the double sigma scares you, you can expand the second sum as the sum of alpha to the n plus alpha to the, two, alpha to the 2n as and so on. You might take what we did for granted, but I'm begging you please note. 
writing an expression as a geometric series is quite a clever way of doing things. I'll do another set of videos to show you how useful this trick could be. So at this point, you might be wondering how any of these apps solve the problem. If anything, making the single summation into a double summation even makes things more complicated. I won't blame you if you can see where we're headed next. However, I'd like to quote my favorite YouTuber, which is uh, Three Blue One Brown, who said that when doing with or when dealing with complex problems, it often helps to check simple cases. So we'll try to look at the first e terms of this double summation. For n equals 1, we have the totient of 1 equal to 1 and the infinite geometric series as alpha plus alpha squared plus alpha cubed and so on. For n equals 2, the terms are alpha squared, alpha to the fourth, alpha to the sixth, and so on. For n equals 3, the totient of n is equal to 2, which makes the terms 2 times the sum of alpha cubed, alpha to the sixth, and so on. And then for n equals 4, the multiplier is 2, while for n equals 5, the multiplier is 4. The important thing to notice here is that some powers of alpha appear for several values of n, except that the multipliers vary for different values of n. Let's zoom in a little, a little bit more and try to examine how to sum these terms, or how the sum of these terms tend to be. Note that there is only one alpha to the 1 in all of these terms, so it contributes just alpha to the sum. Alpha squared appears in n plus 1 and n equals 2, giving a total of 2 alpha squared to the overall sum. Alpha cube appears in n equals 1 and n equals 3 with a coefficient of 2 for n equals 3, giving a total of 3 alpha cube in the overall sum. Alpha, alpha the fourth appears in n equals 1, n equals 2, and 4, with Total contribution of 4 alpha to the 4th to the overall sum. You can do the same for alpha to the 5th, and you'll see that the sum it gives is 5 alpha to the 5th. For n equals 6, we could probably expect that the sum is 6 times alpha to the 6th. So it looks like a pattern. In fact, we can conjecture, and I hereby claim that the double summation is just equal to the sum of m times alpha to the m, where m runs from 1 to infinity. So for m equals 1, we have alpha. For m equals 2, we have 2 alpha squared. For m equals 3, we have 3 alpha cubed, and so on. If I'm answering this problem in an oral competition, I would not mind proving my claim, and I will instead trust my instinct that the pattern holds for every positive integer n. However, since we're outside the contest, we now have the liberty and actually the obligation to prove this claim. Remember, math shouldn't be about finding patterns. Math should be about justifying why a pattern holds. To prove the claim, we make use of an important theorem related to the quotient function. The theorem states that the sum of the totient of all positive divisors of a positive integer is equal to itself. The theorem itself is interesting enough and is worth discussing on a separate piece. In the meantime, I am deferring that discussion on a later date, and for the purposes of the problem at hand, let's assume this uh, theorem to be true. Great minds before us have already proven this to be true, so don't worry much about it. Just as an illustration, note that the sum of the totient of all divisors of 24 is equal to 24. To make use of the theorem, we have to change our perspectives when looking at the double summation. Similar to what we did in the previous illustration, let's look at summing the powers of alpha instead of looking at n. Hence, we make the index bm instead of n and k. The summation in the left hand side has a totient in it and so has the right hand side. So the missing factor there must be something related to the totient function. 
The question now is, when does the alpha to the m occur? And how does that relate to the torsion function? For example, we can ask, where we, when do we see alpha to the fourth? We've already pointed it out a while ago, and the answer is that it shows when n equals 1, 2, and 4. In other words, it appears where 4 is a multiple of n, or in other words, where our values of n are divisors of 4. This means that, for example, alpha to the 6 should be seen for the case when n equals 1, n equals 2, n equals 3, and n equals 6. Taking a step further, this means that the missing multiplier in the right-hand side of the expression is the sum of the totient of, of all divisors d of m. So a while ago it was the totient of n, but this time we're only taking n as the divisors of m. Hence, we have the totient of d. In essence, we have switched the order of summation by changing our perspective. And then, as I mentioned a while ago, we will make use of the theorem that the sum of the totients of the divisors of m is equal to m. Therefore, the double summation simplifies to m times alpha to the m, where m runs from 1 to infinity, as I have claimed a while ago. So, from being a big summation with the totient function, we have reduced the sum a simpler one. You probably might have seen this sum before, but for the benefit of the rest of our audience, let's discuss how to evaluate this sum. First, we let s be our sum. So that's s is equal to alpha plus 2 alpha squared plus 3 alpha cubed plus 4 alpha to the fourth, and so on. X, we multiply both sides by alpha. So we have alpha s is equal to alpha squared plus 2 alpha cubed, and so on. Next, we subtract the result from the original expression. So that's s minus alpha s is equal to the quantity alpha plus 2 alpha squared, and so on, minus alpha squared plus 2 alpha cubed. The left-hand side of the expression can be factored out one, can be factored out as one minus alpha s. Well, the right-hand side reduces to the sum of alpha times alpha squared plus alpha cubed, and so on. This is true because you can pair up every term in the right-hand side as two alpha squared minus alpha squared, three alpha cubed minus two alpha cubed, and so on. Definitely, the right side of the equation is a converging geometric series with sum equal to the first term, that's alpha, over 1 minus the common ratio, which is also alpha. So that's alpha over 1 minus alpha. So for S, we divide both sides by 1 minus alpha, which gives S is equal to alpha over 1 minus alpha squared. Finally, we substitute alpha is equal to 4 over 7, which gives us the sum to be equal to 28 over 9. Therefore, the desired sum of that entire thing is 28 over 9. The solution might be long, but I think it's worth it. I'm definitely hoping that you pick up one or two gems from this discussion. The first being translating an expression into a sum of a geometric series, and the other one is switching the order of the summation by changing our perspective. So that's it for this video. As always, I thank you for supporting our course, and I hope that if this video helped you in one way or another, you'll spread the word to other math enthusiasts like us out there. So see you in the next videos, and thank you for watching.